that you submitted a proposal for. That's, uh, again, if you would like to do that. If not, that's fine. And if for some reason Carolyn doesn't uh, arrive in time, we will make sure that each of you get your certificates. <laughs> I know you want to frame those. <laughs> The, uh, the, your first award recipient is Symphony Pro Musica, Mr. Ford. I wish I had a certificate for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll frame it later. Yes. Okay. Uh, thanks. I, I want to apologize for being late. I had another engagement earlier. Um, we're really pleased to, to have the support of uh, the South Pro Council. It, it's very necessary to us, and I'm sure to all the award winners, and so helpful. Um, we are a regional classical orchestra. Uh, we have, it's full orchestra, we have 70 members. It ranges up, we just did a program that required uh, 90 members. Uh, we've been performing in the Metro West region for 37 years, all under the direction of Mark Churchill, who's a uh, former dean at the New England Conservatory and um, currently involved with the Boston Philharmonic as well. So we're very fortunate to have such steady leadership at the artistic level. I'm its executive director, which puts me in charge of all the non-artistic uh, stuff, I suppose. Uh, we perform in Hudson, four programs a year, and for the last couple of years, we've been performing at St. Mark's School, where we've been fortunate enough to be embraced by them, and we're part of their Southboro Sounds program. Uh, we do four concerts a year. Our concerts are always, uh, we try to keep them very affordable. We have discounts for students, for senior students come free. As a matter of fact, any first time concert goers are always welcome to come free of charge. So come on, check us out. Uh, we have a nice variety of programs this year. Thank you. Our next recipient is the Messiah Community Chorus, and the award was made for the presentation of Handel with Matt Pietro. I had nothing prepared, <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I can do, what I can tell you is. Um, um, this is a tradition that started actually 48 years ago at uh, Pilgrim Church in Saltburg. And um, it was started by the music director there at the time. And um, we're in our 48th year, which is actually unbelievable that, that this has gone on that long. So what, what it's com the chorus itself is comprised core members of the um, Pilgrim Church Choir. Um, which ranges anywhere from 15 to 20 people or so. And um, then sounding, surrounding community members, anybody is welcome to join. Um, we've got members of the St. Mark's Episcopal Church joined us last year, and they join us every year. Um, and other members of surrounding communities all over. And we have a, it's a volunteer chorus that about 40 to 50 members actually. And so this is done in the um, Pilgrim Church sanctu Sanctuary and it is a complete volunteer chorus, like I said. Uh, we hire uh, about a 17-person uh, orchestra and four professional soloists. Um, it's an amazing concert if you haven't seen it. And uh, we do it every year. And it, uh, every year it's a little bit better. So but we thank you so much for your grant and everything. And uh, every, every little bit helps. Appreciate Wonderful. it. Thanks so much. Thank I'm going to speak into the microphone because I know not everyone can hear in the back. The next award uh, will um, go to William Sines and Barbara Black, and this is for the Assabet Valley Master Singers. Oh, I'm sorry, the Interboro <laughs> Community Band. Excuse me, I'm so sorry. And the award is for the ICB Winter Concert. On behalf of about 50 very talented musicians, amateur musicians, I'd like to thank you all for the grant. It, uh, every little bit helps. We are an organization about 30 years old. 
we are composed of amateur musicians who have lives and also a passion for making music. We, um, we meet literally every week um, throughout the entire uh, fall, winter, and spring season. Practice for several hours. Everybody takes the music home. They do a lot of work at home also. The objective is to try to create, under our director, Matt Lefebvre, um, a concert that will be memorable for everyone. It's composed of popular music, but it's also composed of very challenging, in some cases, classical or semi-classical music. It is extremely well attended. Um, we fill the Asabet the auditorium, uh, yeah, the Algonquin. Algonquin Auditorium last fall. And um, I think everyone had a heck of a good time. We certainly did. And so uh, we would invite everyone here. It's all free of charge. Yes. Just show free. up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if, uh, if you have the opportunity, please, uh, please attend. We're, we're also very happy to, as an amateur group, uh, conduct, uh, oh, I don't know, a concert somewhere else if, in fact, the opportunity presents it. So if you have any ideas, let us know. We have our, the concert for which we're receiving this grant was on the 15th of December, and it was very well attended. Um, we also have concerts coming up on the 15th of June, and the, that's at Algonquin, free, and also in Westboro, um, two days later at Whitney Place, um, which is an outdoor concert. So please come see us. And if you play an instrument and you haven't touched it in years, that's what we're all about. So come join us. Right. <laughs> Thank you. I wish I played an instrument. I go. Sounds like a great time. All right. Now, for the Assabet Valley Master Singers, Jennifer Garden. Out that this is for the May 2020 concert, Jennifer. Congratulations. Thank you. The Valley Master Singers is um, a girl. I feel like I'm being repetitive, but we are volunteer <laughs> choral group as well. Um, we are led by Dr. Robert P. Eaton, and we are in our 30, 41st season, which is something to be very proud of. Um, the concert that we're doing in May is right over there at Pilgrim Church, so we hope we will see you. We're doing the glories of plants. We're doing Poulenc and Foray. Foray's Barking Home, which is a beautiful piece of music. So we are so very grateful of the support of the council that you're giving us this grant. So thank you so much. Thank you. Moving on, Mr. Ryan Donovan, could you please bring yourself to the front here. Mm -hmm. Ryan is the director of our library and we certainly thank him for uh, allowing us to use this um, delightful space. Ryan and the library are recipients of three grants and one of the grants was for the wine glass paint night, the other superfoods 101, and the third aromatherapy 101. I like that one. So, Mr. Donovan. Um, so I'd just like to thank the Southbrook Cultural Arts Council. So I know we, we applied for many things, but we just finished our five-year strategic plan, and what we're hearing from our patrons and local residents is they want more programming at the library. So Aromatherapy uh, 101 and the Superfoods 101 is going to be presented by Kim Larkin, um, who has, she's presented a number of times at the library. She usually does chocolate themed programs. So I, I've heard that uh, dark chocolate is a superfood and there might be some treats. Um, the aromatherapy, we're kind of in the preliminary phases of scheduling those out. It looks like the aromatherapy workshop is gonna be uh, on a Saturday towards the end of June. And then um, the wine glass paint night is going to be on a Thursday evening towards the end of August. And then you can look forward to, uh, to superfoods um, at some time in the fall. Uh, so that's, it's really exciting. We're really happy to offer those programs and thank you all so much.
Dan Caruso for the Northport Area Community Concert. Is Dan here? Community chorus, but we do concerts, so I guess it fits no matter which way you do it. Um, just, uh, I feel like the old man on the sea here because we're having our next year will be our 50th anniversary, our 50th concert. It'll be the spring concert, not the not our Christmas concert, because our first concert was done as a result of our beginnings, which was a class, a night school class at Algonquin. That's how the chorus began, and they decided at one point, well, we're tired of singing for ourselves, let's try it for somebody else, and that's how we began. So we went at it now for. Um, We'll be at it for 50 years next year, and we're very happy about that, and we're trying to plan something really special, so keep your ears off what we're about to do. We hope it's going to be something fantastic. I feel I should sort of establish my South Pro bona fides before I do anything else. Um, I do have a big connection to South Pro. One of my first jobs years ago, I was a newspaper reporter for the old Marlboro Enterprise, and my beat was South Pro, so I was very familiar with many elected officials back then, a lot of people probably, I mentioned their name now, wouldn't know, which makes me really old. But, <laughs> And help that. Uh, also, there is, uh, I did student teach, I uh, not student teach, I did substitute teach for a long period at what is now Woodward, which was the middle school at the time. So, and I've been on the stage a few times with the South Pro players. So, personally, South Pro is like coming home again to me next to my home in Marlboro. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to establish those little things. Um, we are having our concert on the 3rd of May. It's called Better Together. It has songs, family songs, you know, friend songs, maybe a love song or two. You know. And the theme is basically that we are better when we work together, and that's obviously what the chorus feel and through all these years that we've been able to do that. Um, we've been able to keep our ticket prices very low. We've been five dollars for 50 years. We think that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good track record. We don't plan on having that change anytime soon. Actually, if, if you know the chorus, our founder, Tony Volpe, retired a couple years ago, and he's still around. If we raise the ticket prices, he'll come down like the wrath of God on us. So <laughs> we're being very careful about that. So, um, but we want to thank the South Arts Council, uh, Council uh, I think I got that wrong probably, I don't know. It's different names in different cities we've been applying to. We appreciate it so much. We do concerts, normally Algonquin, but our favorite second venue is at the Trotty Middle School. Um, so we, we do go back and forth. We, we do apologize. We did go to Westboro once. We were so sorry about that, but <laughs> we, we had to. There was no other available place to go. Um, but we do thank you so much for this, um, for this uh, award because it does help. And it's so important nowadays when there are so many other places where money goes that councils like this exist and manage to spread out the thin, meager resources they get over so many great organizations. And it's just fantastic to see you all here tonight and realize that arts in the Metro West, or at least this little corner of it, is very alive and well. And we're glad that the North Bay Community Chorus is part of that. Thank you. South Bow Recreation. The award for the South Pro Summer Concert Series, Jen Hansen. Thank you. Um, yeah, so our, our new director, Tim Davis, if you haven't met him, he's new as of this summer in Southboro. Um, and he's done an amazing job with the department and has all kinds of new ideas, so we're really excited to see what he's going to bring to the town. Um, so I'm here tonight representing the Recreation Commission because Tim is home with a infant, a newborn, so he was required there tonight. Um, but um, so we're really excited about these summer concert series. The Arts Council has always liked them, always been a part of them and participated. And also really excited that this summer we have a kids performer coming. So one of our performances in July will actually be a kids band. So you always see the kids running around the lawn, so we thought it was time to see if we could bring in the one that was geared more towards them. Um, and then we're also really excited for this summer to be partnering with the library and bringing a movie series. So you'll start to hear more about that and we'll be offering movie series throughout the summer as well. So we thank the council for its support and continued support of um, the efforts that recreation does to also bring arts to the community. So thanks. Thank you. The Mass Educational Theater, the project, the Massachusetts Theater Celebration, Michael McGarty. Michael here? 
No? Okay. Uh, but we see that our representative uh, has arrived. Um, we want to get our certificates out to everyone, which we will. Uh, before the chairperson for the council comes up and says a few words, I know that she will, and I certainly want to recognize Kim Galbraith for the, um, the refreshments that we have tonight. We have everything from a, a brain tablecloth uh, to brain or heart lollipops, chocolate lollipops, and everything in between. So we really, really encourage you, please, to Can not be shy. That? Explain. The food is delicious, but the theme is so different. I is well, that, is that what she does? Or well, <laughs> no, no. She takes a theme and okay. she works her magic around any type of a theme. But we used the theme tonight that Sigrid was speaking of. So that was for the the anatomical um, project, and okay. Kim worked her magic around that. But uh, please, please. Uh, help yourselves before you go. We don't want to leave any food here at all. So with that, I'd like to introduce Mary Picars, who is the chairperson for the Southboro Cultural Arts Council. And uh, I thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Thank you. I've just been involved with the Arts Council for about two years. And what's probably more fascinating than anything is that we have all these artists throughout the town, and they're all hiding. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to figure out who they all are, and luckily we're, we're finding them bit by bit. Um, I see that Patrick was here, I don't know where he is now, but um, he brought his art to the um, Arts and Crafts Festival that we had as part of Heritage Day. Um, so that was great to see. Um, I was Googling artists in Southboro, and I learned that there's uh, a painter who painted the, the dome at Mass General Hospital. And I thought, how did I not know that, <laughs> right? So we're so lucky tonight that he actually came. He and his wife, Warren Prosperi, his wife Lucia, and their niece Amy, is that? Cousin, cousin, cousin Amy. Cousin Amy. Yeah, who's a jeweler. Who's a jeweler. Who's a jeweler. Who's a jeweler. Anne or Amy? Annie. 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 Okay. <laughs> yes. So, um, you know, if you have any suggestions as to how we get all of these artists together and how we create a database, um, as some of you know that there was actually a facility, the Art Center, down um, in the old high school, and we have some access to it, but it's also being used by other groups now, and um, that's, that's really been a challenge for us. So if you have ideas, and if you know people who are artists, uh, instructors, we're looking to start some classes maybe through the uh, Senior Center. Um, any ideas that you have. We're so happy to be able to give out these grants every year, and we do get probably 20 um, applications each year, and we vote on those that we think uh, benefit the town the most. But there are also facilities grants. There are festival grants. Um, there are uh, grants for artists who want to just follow their passions. So please come to us if you have ideas, but you maybe not have the resources. We can help you find resources. Um, and luckily Sigrid came to one of our meetings. She was like, I have to figure out what's going on with this Arts Council. She showed up, she had ideas. We, we you know, were so excited to be able to bring her art to the town. And I think, I think listening tonight, you all benefited from, from hearing her speak about her art. Um, so, anyway, I really appreciate all the effort that you make to bring art and music and, um, you know, Catherine with the Art on the Trails, um, we'll bring her up next. Yeah. Um, it's just fantastic, so thank you. Catherine, we 
cannot forget you with the art on the trails. It's a fabulous project. Please come. Thank you. So some of you have been doing your programs for 50 years. I'm going to say this year is going to be number four. <laughs> I can't compete with 50 years, but I am very pleased to be a recipient again of a grant from the, the Cultural Arts Council in Southboro for Art on the Trails. For those of you who don't know what Art on the Trails is, um, it's a combination of nature, art, and poetry. Um, it starts with a juried art exhibition at the Beals Preserve. Um, we have just um, settled, or uh, that's not the right word, we are very excited to welcome a juror, um, Hilary Zelson, who works in Cambridge. She uh, works for the Cultural Arts Council in Cambridge, is an educator at the MFA, and she's a public art uh, aficionado. She's going to jury our show this year, so that means um, artists will submit their work. Um, she'll review the work. Um, the theme this year is called Rising Up, and every year it's a different theme. Um, we open for proposals starting in a week, and when people are accepted, they install their work on the trails. Um, there's Denise Johnson um, is one example of having um, the Neri School all of the art students there put together a project um, for the last couple of years that have been phenomenal. So we're talking about professional sculptors, but we're also talking about groups of people who get, get together and do things. And the work has been extraordinary and different every year. Um, we have an opening that's infamously called the Moving Celebration because we walk along the trails with glasses of Prosecco and we hear the artists talk about their artwork. And then the poets come out and write poetry about the artwork. And in the fall, we publish a book. Um, we're very lucky again to have Cynthia Francas here. She's one of our poetry um, editors. And um, we have a, a poetry uh, publishing house that produces the book. And I, of course, once again, Cynthia forgot the books. But um, there, there's three years of books, and there'll be a, another book this year. <coughs> And um, we're, we're about to hear who the poetry juror is going to be, and there will be prizes for art and poetry. My goal with our new funding um, is to start giving stipends to the artists. That is my hope. And as we build this program, that we actually can pay our artists for their art. Um, but we do provide at least an award. So um, thank you again to the South, Southboro Cultural Arts Council for your support. I'd like to welcome. I'd like to welcome our uh, local representative, uh, Carolyn Dykema. Carolyn is here, and she has herself, most importantly, and the certificates as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I want to first apologize for being um, later than I had hoped. I was actually down the street at the Finn School where Mass DOT is hosting a, a public hearing on the bridge reconstruction projects in Southboro that are going to be coming up next summer. Um, and clearly they should have been here because this is where everyone is in South Carolina. So, um, I think it just uh, is a testament to the robust and uh, really uh, alive and lively arts community here in South Carolina. So which is because of the South Carolina Arts Council um, and, and all of you who are here in this audience. So, you know, it, it's funny, everybody kind of has their thing that kind of gets them going. And for me, it's always been the arts, even when I was little. You know, I was a doodler, and every Christmas it was giving more art supplies. And so I'm sitting back here and kind of listening to the, to the conversation, and I just, like, feel the, the synapses going, like, you know, just making the connections. And I, was, I, was, I came in with the comments about the brain tablecloth. And all I could think of was, well, of course. <laughs> you know, we, you know we, we talk about STEM education um, being sort of the, the sciences and engineering. Well, now we're talking about STEAM education because the arts has been shown to be essential in developing the creative um, mind muscles, perspectives, willingness to think out of the box that is essential to the innovation that drives the sciences, engineering. So 
Um, I think it's just one more way that the arts really invigorates our community of every age. Our students, our young people who are interested in the arts, are you know everyone, middle-aged, older folks, everyone has something to bring to the table. And you think about you know how much it adds to the community, not only beautifying the community, but allowing us to really, or, or prompt us, I guess, to think in new ways, in different ways, um, experience. Uh, emotions and perspectives that maybe aren't natural to us, but maybe someone else can, can kind of open our eyes to new ways of seeing things. And I think it really just captures the essence of what it means to be human. And it's so important to our communities. And um, I'm thrilled that in the district I represent, which is four communities, um, that the arts is, is a one of the priorities. And the, and the evidence I have for that was back, I came into office just before the recession and the bottom fell out of the economy. So we were making some really hard decisions about the state budget and where we're gonna put some um, increasingly shrinking dollars. And the Cultural Council awards and the funding that contributes to part of the grants that are given out today from the state is funded every year and usually increased with an earmark that we file that we get money added to what the governor originally proposes. And we were being very selective about earmarks and what we would support and what we would sign on to. I will say that the uh, overwhelming number of emails and calls that I got about the Cultural Council earmark and appropriation <coughs> that time, and I think perhaps even more so at, at a time when people, a lot of people were struggling, honestly, um, they needed the arts. They needed the arts as a way to bring people together uh, and I just want to call out Art on the Trail and Catherine and her tremendous work. I have been privileged to be, uh, I think I'm, I missed last year, but um, I have been many times uh, on that walk and just loved it. And, and want to point out Cincha, who has been uh, key to bringing it to Hopkinton. Yeah. Uh, and it had a little bit of a respite there, but I think it's coming back, coming back this again year. this year. Mm -hmm. So not only is this good work um, strengthening and enlivening and beautifying the community of Southboro, but there are synergies happening across communities that uh, are so important to our whole state. So it's really just my honor to be able to be here. Again, my apologies for being late. Um, given um, the importance of these grants and the importance of the types of programming that we've heard uh, are, are receiving grants tonight, I, I, my office with uh, Senator Eldridge, who is also a big supporter of the arts, we do little just recognitions to say thank you um, and show how meaningful the work is, not only the Cultural Arts Council in coordinating this, but also the artists themselves who give so much of themselves and their talents uh, to the community uh, here in Southboro and, and elsewhere. So thank you all. And I guess what I will do, I won't go through the list of people again, but hopefully I can kind of find each of you um, in the audience after we conclude the program and I can make sure you get your citation. So thank you all. We were hoping we would see um, Luis. We were hoping we would see Luis Scotto. Luis is from the Mass Cultural Council, and he is going to say a few words to us about the Massachusetts Cultural Council and how our individual councils fit in to the the, the, the greater state's efforts. Thank you. Um, my name is Luis Scott. I'm a program manager with the Mass Cultural Council. My main focus at the office is I manage the cultural districts program for the Commonwealth, but I also work with two um, regions worth of um, local cultural councils, including Southboro Cultural Council and Northboro, which I just came from. And I have to tell you, I'm usually, when it doubles up like this, I'm usually like really like, okay, like I'm 52 or wherever, you know, I leave. But I had like a fanboy moment because um, Stephen Lewis was there. And I don't know if people know Stephen Lewis, the library might, but Stephen Lewis is a man who collects thousands of themed posters, and I wore posters, just you name it, social justice posters, and he puts these posters up. He'll he'll apply to like ten different um, communities, and he'll do like he's doing one in Westford, he's doing one now next, that opens next week in Southboro Library. Um, and they're just incredible, but I've seen his name going back over a decade. I'm originally from Connecticut, so I've even gotten his emails of his exhibits. And, um, and he was there, I've never seen him. And he was there, so I had to wait till like 
it ended so I can go and shake his hand. It's this older gentleman who's just been doing this, and so and then it just threw me off. And then finding parking. But, um, <laughs> but a big a big thrust of my work is um, reactive during the during the granting season. And I say that to say that I have had minimal touches with Southboro because when it's reactive, it's always when something goes wrong. Like this cultural council really has it going on. They're firing on all cylinders. And I look at their, um, I have a copy of their funding report. We can pull up a funding report that, that tells us how many times the municipality accesses the different buckets that we have. And so four years ago, the town um, was able to access two. One, there was a school who applied for a big yellow school bus grant and then obviously the allocation for the local cultural council. Today, as I look today, there are four, including the library which received the projects grant from CIP, Capital Improvements Pro um, uh, Plan. And, and it's, it's just really great to see that capacity. So when I hear someone saying, let us know what you need, we'll look for it, we'll let you know, definitely look at the cultural council as a fountain of that information because we will let them know what's happening. I hear about the rails, um, the trails um, uh, program and there's wonderful stuff from the Mass Humanities Councils that I'd love to connect you with that I think can touch because you, you never know when the next 300, 400, 500 dollar grant is going to come from. So I'm just throwing that out so definitely hit me afterwards. And um, just one quick thing, part of my cultural district thing um, I, I visited Beverly today because they're up for renewal for their, their designation. And you know, I go and I talk to people and I walk around and you know, you see so many memorials to wars in, in especially up in the Northeast because we go all the way back to the American Revolution. And there was a Vietnam Memorial and this one was so, just to, just to show like what one image can do, one, one sculpture, one piece of art in this case, it was a young man sitting on a bench, a sculpture of a young man sitting on a bench with a letter um, for B for Beverly, like Beverly High, and he was holding a draft card, and he was waiting for the bus to take him to Boston. And I was like, yo, oh, that's pretty awesome. Right? That, that gets you, right? So um, just, you know, everywhere you go, you see something that just like stops you, and. And it's not like these big, tall buildings. Sometimes this is something as small as like a little sculpture. So um, thank you for the work that you do. In Spanish, we have the saying, um, dime con quien habla y te digo quien eres. Tell me who you walk with and I'll, and I'll tell you who you are. And, and when, when these communities walk with art, it just shines right through. So thank you very much for the work that you do. Thank you for allowing me to come and just say a few words. And um, I'll just thank you. So that winds up the formal part of the program. Thank you again, all of you, for coming today. We, we so much uh, re uh, appreciate the, the support that we get, and I want to reiterate what Mary is saying. Uh, if you want to be more involved um, with the arts, if you know artists, if you have ideas uh, on different types of art projects uh, that we can bring to the town, please let us know. We'd, we'd be eager to hear from you. And I'd like to just mention one more thing. I think it's very important that art has a place in South And we need your help to talk to the selection here in town. To, to ensure that maybe someday the Arts Council will actually have a home, a home of our own, where we can have these programs and programs like them and have things, even things we can't even dream of right now. So if you could please talk to your selectmen and say, yes, you want art in South Row, and it needs to have a home. We are so grateful to the library, however that they partnered with us so that we could have this opportunity this evening. So thank you.